Because I 100% think this deck will be meta, guys, I'm going to talk about this deck for a little while. Let's look into it. Here, um, the cards that pretty much the deck will revolve around. Some of you guys haven't seen them before, so I'm just going to touch on each one of them. Moye is the card that can reveal a worm inside of your hand and then special summon a token that way. And all of these cards are one card synchros. That's insane. That's nuts. Instead of having to waste multiple cards to go into one slow or relatively slow synchro the way the Yang Zings originally were, this deck can make one card synchros. That's nuts. It's very Zodiac-ish in the way that it's kind of um, on paper built in that way. But that's just my opinion. You can kind of take it or leave it for how it is. But let's just get into the combo. You start off by normal summoning and revealing the worm, obviously which would be tie. And then from there, you special summon the token. From there, you go into the Synchro 8, and that's your usual play that you do. As long as you have a worm in your hand, you can do that. You special summon Swordmaster. Swordmaster on summon, as well as the Moye in the graveyard, the Swordmaster adds or dumps a card that says Zhang Jian, as well as negates a monster on your opponent's turn, but that's the size of the point. And obviously, the Moye that's in the graveyard can help you to draw a card. So you stack that however you want to on a chain. You guys know how that goes. Whichever one you really need to resolve, you do. These cards, I'm just using them to represent the rest of the cards in your hand, which is why I'm doing this to show that the deck is meta. Because off of the one card and off of the two cards, you literally go ballistic off of that. After that's done, you pitch the tie into the graveyard and then special summon the long Yuan. So Yuan or Juan, whatever the hell you want to call them, is a free special summon by basically dumping a worm out of your graveyard or a Jane Gian monster out of your hand into the graveyard. And then it's a six combined with the level four token that it summons is how you summon the tens. So again, and moving forwards a little bit, being able to do that is really, really obvious play. And then going from there, you end on a card like Chan Ying, Chang Ying. I hope I'm saying all these names right. I'm, I know I'm butchering them probably. But this is pretty much the combo that you should have every single time in any of these hands. And if you're going to optimize it, maybe you don't want to play the 10. You, I don't think you really even have to play the 10 years, but the 10 years are free. Very similar. Shout out to Tanner Makana. He's on our team. Shout out to him. It's very similar to Terra Top, MX Saber, Invoker. You remember how that was inside of Zoo? It's the same type of thing. The Tinnies are so free that you'd be stupid not to play them. But you don't have to play them. I just would highly, highly, highly recommend it. But moving on, I feel like the burn for the 1200 is just so ignorant. And you, if you can end on something like this, which this card being able to negate a card on your opponent's side of the field, this card giving you a massive boost for the amount of banished cards that you may have, is really really insane and if a card is banished while it is on the field you can banish one card from each from your opponent's field and their graveyard so it's literally trishula for the most part not quite but for the most part that's really really nuts and you do have to fulfill both just so we understand moving on to the next combo I wanted to show what happens when you start off with all three of the cards that I showed in the last combo as well. But what happens when you start off with them? What hand should you at least try to um, where should you try to get what board state should you try to get to just by having these cards in your hand? Let's get into it. As far as the next combo, guys, I still feel like the next play or the first play that you should start off with is Moye, just because I feel like revealing a worm in your hand is so free and it's such a, the, the it's the strongest normal summit of pretty much all of the cards that are in the archetype so far. As far as that's concerned though, being able to normal summon, reveal a worm and then special, and then the same way that you start off the last combo, you special summon the synchro. And then from there, the two chain together, one being able to add a card or dump a card this time you're going to add the Zhang Zhang, the spiritual peak, which is the, the themed monster reborn, as well as draw a card, which again, these tokens are in the spell and trap zone are showing the blank cards in your hand. And then from there, being able to special the, lo the long Yuan, God, these names, <laughs> trust me, these names are ridiculous. But anyway, you special summon it out on the field and then make a level 10 again. You can pick this card, you can pick Baroness, which will also come out around the same time. 
burn them for 1200 which is going to be really really stupid inside of a game three or inside of time you already i can already see the time issues coming i can already see people getting mad i can see it coming i can see it coming but the combo doesn't stop there if you do add this card you can special summon back the tie which then allows you to special summon by banishing another token and then from there you can end on yet another synchro now that whatever synchro that is that's up to you if you want omega you can have omega now obviously this deck plays super duper hard in the nibiru so i'm telling you that's the deck's weakness that i've seen so far is that it walks directly into nibiru other than that this deck is absolutely ridiculous let's get into the next combo also be reminded that water it can negate you know you you got that in this part of the combo we're starting off without any of the engine cards in our hand this is how good the deck is and this is why this card is very similar in this deck to Terra top shout out to tanner mcconnor he said it in the in the group chat in the team chat and i really love the point because it is 100 percent true having Vashuda, having a shuna as i've always called it out I, I could be butchering these names wrong as well too but getting into the combo you don't even have to open up the engine. Trust me, you don't. By summoning the Monk of Tinyi, which you've already known, you've already seen this before, and then special summon the Vashuda out of the hand because you control no effect monsters, and then being able to banish this card, Ashuna, from the graveyard to summon out Adhara, you literally start your engine without normal summoning. That's insane, guys. That's MX Saber and Volkerish. Because that easily, you get to add one of these cards to your hand. And then from there, kaboom, you have the combo. Now, obviously, you can add a whole lot of stuff right here. But I'm just showing that you can add the normal summon. Moving on to the next combo. Drytron, just because I theorize so much in Drytron, sometimes you're not going to open the most pristine hand with all of the archetype cards in your hand. And I'm showing you where the Tinyis can come in in handy. On top of not only not opening one, let's say you do open one engine card, which we'll use the Moye just to help clarify. Going into the next com set of combos, um, special summoning the Ashuna is usually the first play. Say these two are the only cards in your hand. And then go from there, you go into the Monk of Tinyi. And then from there, you banish the Ashuna to be able to special summon out Adhara from the deck. From there, you actually go into another Monk of the Tinyi, which is why I feel that you actually do have to have two. I could also see three, but I feel like two is the correct number. I could be completely wrong, though. You might want to play Avarice in a deck like this, too. I mean, you, you are going to go through some monsters. Not extraordinarily quickly like some decks, but relatively quickly. It's just something to think about. But from there, you banish the Adhara to add back the Ashuna now the reason why you do that is because of Moye and when Moye is in the field when it's on the field of play you have to have a worm in your hand so that's why you have to do that that way I'm only saying if you don't have a worm in your hand and these are the two cards you start off with you're still going to have a worm in your hand if you're not interrupted by any any traps anyways you normal summon reveal the worm that you just added back and then special summon and then from there you go into the same line of play with the sword master which is really really insane because he can he's good going first and he's good going second walking into a board but from there whatever card you really want to add is really up to you but again re be reminded that you do draw a card off of the moye that's in the graveyard and then from there it's pretty much figuring out what in the world to do after that you can add another worm you can add the trap card which is basically icarus attack and it's also a token when it's banished but that's pretty much it guys you really pick whatever in the world you want i really feel like rounding out the combo you might want to at least think about getting to the next point which i wanted to talk about too which is shaman of the tinyi this is another layer shaman of the tinyi is like lumina for worms pretty much to help explain the card very very quickly but be reminded that this card does dump worms Again, I will say it, it does dump worms, and Mare Mare is the premier worm outside of the archetypes that I've already mentioned that you would want to summon because, well, let's face it, special summoning tokens like a nutcase has always been insane. Shout out to Tomahawk. You're always going to be banned, fam. Anyways, fast forwarding through the combos, it's pretty much whatever in the world you want to end on. 
but it's also really, really simple what you're going to end on. You're using the effect three times. And in my opinion, this is probably the board that you're going to end on out here. Obviously, these are just me showing the blank cards that were down here. This is what you actually would draw into. But being able to end on an interrupt as well as this card, which is absolutely insane as it can create. It has a token creation of its own as well as Shaman itself. And then an Icarus attack back behind that. Let's say you do have that in your hand or you've added it. It's just absolutely insane, guys. Trust me, all of, all of this deck, I haven't seen any part of this deck that I haven't liked. And that's absolutely insane. And I always say a deck is meta when it ends like this, where you still can load up and go the next turn. That defines what a meta deck is. Through the combos, because I really feel like everything I've said is kind of self-explanatory. But again, this is just how the deck really plays. It's really fluid. Um, you don't always have to open up the engine cards. It can still get to the engine without even having the engine, which is the silliest thing that I think I've ever said on in any video. I feel like that's absolutely stupid. But this is how the basic combos are going to look. I don't feel like it's anything rocket scientist that you can't figure out. This is just the baseline that you should probably end up with. In each and every one of these, I really feel like it's absolutely stupid how you can get to the engine like this as well as get to really really powerful synchros this quickly it's absolutely stupid in my opinion but again guys i i don't really foresee um mare mare getting hit before this deck drops it's just something that i would 100 percent expect after this deck has been out for a while like all like it always happens there's always a deck and getting to the point is always a really good thing i really feel like this can be any seven again this could be a dawn dragster if you really feel like you want to you're not as long as um i don't think there's any restrictions like that i could be completely wrong but I, i'm really i'm pretty sure there isn't any restrictions like that but again guys each and every one of these combos it's the same kind of line of play over and over and over again so i'm telling you now while you're watching this video go buy 10 years i would even recommend collector's cash or game cafe or several other stores in the kansas city area as well as around the world go pick up the 10 years seriously each and every one of these combos looks the same and it's pretty much terror top so i'm telling you guys go pick up 10 years now let's get into the profile. We have all that out of the way, all of the combos out of the way. Now we get to look at a little bit of the deck list and try to figure out how in the world to actually build it as soon as it arrives and let's go from there. I really feel like most of the deck really builds itself. The tenues are really, really powerful. However, not all of the tenues are really, really powerful. I think these are kind of useless, like Nahata, Adhara, um, Mapura, if, I, if I'm saying that correctly. Um, the Gold Sark, I'm trying something out just because when a trap card gets banished or when the spell card gets banished, they do something. So that's where I'm thinking about the level modulation with the spell card the token creation with the trap card. It's just something interesting and something to mess around with. But I feel like if you were absolutely optimizing it, you might not play Gold Sark. You might if you really feel like it's that important. And obviously Foolish Goods with the Dragon Sword Appears card is also really, really decent. But I really, really don't feel like you need that. I really feel like you would build this deck pretty much to to go hand in hand with some of the rest of the deck. But I 100% would play a card like Talents because this is a Wombo combo deck and it does die relatively hard to nibiru assuming nibiru is still around by then hopefully cross out comes out by then and then cross out will easily go into this deck but as far as how the deck actually runs and i highly recommend talent so again look where you can find space in here i don't feel like this chun jun card is really that necessary and i also feel like it's tied directly to the ecclesia card which I'm also not playing, but the Ecclesia card that will come out in Burst of Destiny, I also believe, will be relatively relevant as well, just because it's a Lone Fire Blossom for this deck because of the effect to special. During the main phase, you can tribute this card and special summon one, Zhang Jian. So, 
that's just something to keep in mind but i don't feel like this card is really necessary in any way and i really feel like the three that we highlighted pretty much in all the combos are pretty much all you need so again guys i would play talents 100 percent in this deck or cross out whichever is out at the time this deck is actually dropping as far as some of the other stuff um i, I feel like the 10 ye stuff is correct to be 331 i don't feel like you want multiple adharas but you can all you have to do is just play another one I feel like called by the grave is correct i feel like desires actually boosting your monsters which is insane because when the big synchro is out on the field you gain for stuff being banished. So that's why I would probably pick Desires over Prosperity, et cetera, et cetera, because I feel like you need your extra deck for the most part. And then obviously, um, these are just options down here. Swordmaster can go in the deck very, very easily for the simple fact that Swordmaster that's actually out on the field, the Synchro, let's make sure we understand, negate stuff and be, when a card is negated, the other Swordmaster can actually special summon itself. So that's just something to keep in mind. And then for the rest of the stuff, if you're playing into a, a back row heavy format, you would easily play Black Rose Dragon. If you're playing against decks that need certain spells to resolve, you would play Jadon Dragster. Obviously, you have cards like Backsteer, but I don't feel like it's super necessary when Dragite is just a slightly better card. That's just my opinion, as it also has a, a spell or trap negate. But it's because you have Water Monsters, obviously, if you, if you never caught on to that. That's, this is water, that's insane. I know, I know. But pretty much everything else, guys, I feel like is is uh, pretty pretty self-explanatory. I don't feel like you need the Yazi. I'm just, I use that as my representative of all the level sevens. And because it's a worm, and because it's a Yang Zing. Shout out to Yang Zings, the original worms. And Metaphys and True Draco are also options as well to mess around with because they're worms. I don't think they're going to be anywhere near optimal or relevant, just like Yang Zings won't be relevant with this deck. That's just my opinion. I feel like this deck is what they meant to do with Yang Zings, so therefore I don't feel like you would want to mix with Yang Zings with this deck. But that's just me. And then obviously the rest of these cards, it's really just synchro toolboxes. And obviously abusing the 10 years because, well, let's face it, these links are really really insane you've already seen what shaman can do i hope this video has helped you guys in some kind of way this is pegasus signing out i appreciate you for tuning in i'm out yg baby arrivederci